And it down to the field where we welcome in Tino Walenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly appreciate that applause. You know, applause is what has motivated my family to remain in the circus for well over seven generations. In fact, just above your heads right now, performing is seventh generation Walenda. Alex. Now, during our career, we've been known for everything you can do in the circus. But for the last 75 or 80 years, we've been known for one thing in particular, walking a slender line high in the air like that cable you see up over our heads. On that, we stand on our heads, ride bicycles, and do pyramids with as many as seven people at one time in a three-level pyramid. In fact, not too long ago, we set a new all-time world record in the Guinness Book of World Records. When we started with our seven-person pyramid, four people standing on a wire with bars slung between them, two people standing on those bars with a bar between them, and then a young lady seated on a chair. But to get the record, we had to go one step further. We added one more person, my youngest daughter, to the very top of that pyramid, making it incredible. I had to do that four separate times. The highest walk that I've done was only about the length of one football field, some 300 feet, but it was a height of over 179 feet in the air, roughly the height of an 18-story building, actually well over the height of your lights that you have out here at Minute Maid Stadium. You know, it all started for me when I was just seven years old. That's when my grandfather, Carl Walenda, put me on a wire. It wasn't this high off the ground. It was about the average height of a regular kitchen table. On that, he taught me how to hold that balancing pole, how to place my feet. But the most important thing that he taught me was that I need to keep my eyes on a fixed and an unmoving point at the far end of the wire. That's where a tightrope walker derives his balance, from focusing on a point. You're going to notice during the course of my performance, though, that I do have the ability to look around, to talk to you face to face. But invariably, with that roof gone, if the wind were to begin to blow, if this wire wasn't quite as stable as I hope that it will be, or if I lose my balance for any reason at all, my vision will instinctively return to that point at the far end of the wire. Now, since I can't be looking at my feet, I need to know exactly where that wire is with each and every step that I take. Well, I'm supposed to know where that wire is. It's supposed to be right down here in front of me. There it is. Whoop! Well, folks, we just came back from a grueling trip to New Zealand. In fact, my clock's not right yet. It's the middle of the night at the moment. I'm not quite sure that I feel like doing this. You don't really want to see me go all the way to the other side anyway, do you? All right, well, I'm going to give this a try, but I just want you to know something goes wrong here. It's all your fault. It's not very nice of you to send me out on this tightrope when I don't feel like going. You know, folks, that type of an attitude can get a tightrope walker like me all shook up. Now, this has never happened to me on a wire, and I hope that it never will. But if it ever did, the only thing that I could do would be to rely on all the training I've had during these 49 years that I've been walking a tightrope. And if I'll uh, stick it out, if I'll keep my focus, if I don't give up, eventually my nerves will settle, my balance will return, and I will be able to make it all the way from one end of the wire to the safety of the opposite end, just like that.
There is one problem, though. Nowhere to put my balancing pole down. To go down that way would certainly be suicide. You know, folks, apparently I'm headed in the wrong direction. But I don't want you to be concerned because I've been headed in the wrong direction many, many times in my life. And I've discovered that when I'm headed in the wrong direction, the best thing for me to do, and it may be one of the hardest things to do, but the only thing that makes any sense is to get myself turned around, get focused in the right direction, and work my way to the safety of that goal. Coming up in just a minute, I'm going to have my youngest daughter that I spoke to you about. It was at the top of that eight-person pyramid, and she's going to show your head. Use your head. Use your head. Ugh. I'm going to have to talk to my mom when I get home. All I got out of that was a splitting headache. But you know, probably what she meant by using my head is that I need to think my way through the situation. And if I'm going to think my way through the situation, I'm going to need to get my feet on the tightrope, pick up the balancing pole, and make my way into the platform. So, feet on the wire, pick up the pole, pick up the pole, No, that, that doesn't work. My legs are way too short. Uh, let me get myself back out here on the wire. What I'm going to have to do is step over the pole. So, step over the pole. Step over the pole. Step over the pole. Just not like that. Boys and girls, where's the pole supposed to be? in front, and why didn't you tell me that a couple of minutes ago? All right, the pole needs to go in the front, so I don't think I can get it back under my feet. Let me try to do it this way and get it a little higher and move up to a little bit some more serious stuff. Now, boys and girls, let me tell you something. That little lesson my grandfather taught me so long ago has been invaluable to me through the years. That lesson about focusing on a point. Because you see, I've found that in my career, the times that I've missed that wire, and I've never fallen to the ground, but I've hurt myself lots of times just hitting that wire. I've cracked my ribs at least four times. But my grandfather always taught me also that old circus adage that the show must go on. So I've always been able to get myself back up, focused on that point, and continue on. It's helped me in life as well, because I've found that if I'll focus in on a point, if I'll persevere, if I don't give up, if I don't allow the winds of adversity to enter in and destroy my focus, then guess what? I've found that I can accomplish pretty much the impossible. And boys and girls, you don't have to be a tightrope walker, but whatever you set your heart on in your career for the rest of your life, study hard, focus in, don't give up. When troubles happen, persevere, just keep going. And just like the Walenses have gotten up again and again and have come back to succeed, you also can succeed. You also can do the complete impossible.